just two quick questions, actually. Um, the first one I forgot to ask you yesterday, what I really wanted to hit at with um, preservatives in our food and alcohol, uh, does that cut us off from our spirituality? No. It the only thing that cuts you off from your spirituality is holding yourself in a vibration that doesn't allow it. And you certainly have power to dominate the vibration of the carrot. Okay. <laughs> okay. Man against carrot. Okay. That's clear. And what I'm, I'm hoping you could also uh, expound a little bit on what are our ideal sleep patterns? Is there an ideal pattern for the organism that is best? Yes. And what would that be? <laughs> First, we want to explain to you the benefit of sleep. It isn't about resting, because you are resting even as here as you are sitting on these chairs. The benefit is, of sleep is that you withdraw your consciousness from this physical realm. And when you withdraw your consciousness, you withdraw any pushing against or resistance. And when there is no resistance, then your body is able to align to its higher vibration. And so slumber is more about aligning vibration than anything. So it stands to reason that one who is more connected to the non-physical energy stream would require less sleep or would want less sleep. But sometimes the opposite seems to occur because another thing that happens is the more you acclimate to the higher vibration, the more you enjoy slumber, which is a high vibration. Catch 22. And so, <laughs> and so what we would encourage you to do, the natural rhythm of your body is, you see, when you slumber and your consciousness withdraws, even though your energies are being aligned, your body is not receiving movement and your body really thrives with movement. Any of you who become sedentary and your society sort of does that to you as, as you work eight hours or, or uh, but the, the, your body really is a body of motion. In other words, you want, your body is an organism that wants to move. And so if we were standing in your physical shoes and we were wanting to guide ourselves to be most in harmony in terms of action with our non-physical knowing and intent, these, there are three things that we would do that most of you don't do. We would drink enormous quantities of water. So much water that in the beginning we would find ourselves uncomfortable because the elimination process would be a, a bit hindering. But we really would. We would drink lots and lots and lots of water. Your capacity to, to hold more water will grow as you consume more water. And, and so the elimination process would not be so uncomfortable. And the, every cell of your body, which is mostly water, would benefit because the energy transmission of your body is affected the more water you drink, the, the more easily the energy flows. And so there are lots of things that you could eat, but the one thing that we in really encourage is more water. And, and we mean water minus preservatives, water minus caffeine, water without sugars. We mean water. We really do. We mean water. Mm -hmm. Water with minerals, water with all of the natural stuff that is in water. We would drink water and we would find a source of it that is pure without too much dealing with. In other words, if you can find water that is water, that's what we would drink, water. <laughs> the other thing that we would do is that we would move our bodies intentionally. In other words, we would find reasons to move. And by moving, we don't mean dramatic exercise. We mean moving. We mean motion. We mean walking, mostly. Moving the body, moving the arms flexing the muscles, stretching the muscles, uh, uh, movement. And the third thing that we would do is that we would rest when we are tired and we would awaken when we are refreshed. In other words, we would try to follow a more natural rhythm. Now that's hard to do under the work environment that many of you live, but we, we, would, we would sleep shorter snatches more frequently. In other words, we'd take a little nap on the lunch hour if we could, and we'd snatch a little nap uh, after work if we could, and we'd sleep a shorter expanse uh, in the middle of the night. In other words, we would, we would not sleep longer than four hours at any stretch, only because the body benefits so much by motion. Wow. <laughs> Thank you. That's what I needed to hear. For most, that's going to be a difficult acclimation because you've trained yourself to believe that you need eight hours of sleep. Esther, every now and again, when because they're traveling and they have an early flight and, and 
she's doing many things before she gets ready for the flight. When she goes to bed, she will say, we only get to sleep three hours. <laughs> And she will say to Jerry something like, sleep fast, or this, is going to be, or this is going to be a short night. And what she really means is, I'm not going to get enough sleep. And then what she discovered, and then often in that vibration, she can't go to sleep. Even though she's only got three hours, she sees the clock ticking away. And she will say to Jerry, I don't think I slept at all. In other words, I laid here for three hours, but I'm not sure I even slept. And so we encouraged her to begin, rather than seeing this as a short night of deprivation, to see it as a long afternoon nap, a lazy long nap. We have enjoyed this interaction immensely. You are doing extremely well. Be easy about all of this. Relax, lighten up, laugh more, play more. Get your cork up there floating. And it is our promise to you that you will live happily ever after. We have enjoyed this immensely. There is great love here for you. We are complete.